Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 22nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In our diaries in particular recently, we have usually talked about Windows malware. Well, uh, Windows is not the only operating system out there. There are quite a number of Mac users. So Pascal today wrote a little bit about how to achieve persistence with Mac malware. Mac uses sort of its own little startup system and part of this are launch agents. So Pascal is talking about how they work and how they could possibly be used to achieve persistence by malware and then also how to investigate your launch agent. And we got an interesting paper from researchers at the University of Hamburg about TLS sessions and how browsers maintain them for fairly long times. So whenever you connect to a server via TLS, you are creating a TLS session with a unique session ID. In the past, these session IDs have sometimes been used to actually track users. This really hasn't worked out too well because the session ID is sometimes shared if a browser is behind a proxy. But nevertheless, if you just like to track users, for example, for advertisement purposes and such, well, a TLS session ID may be good enough. The tricky part here is that browsers will actually resume sessions they had established with servers in the past if the browser itself wasn't closed. These researchers did a very systematic study using something like 40 different browsers and then using the top 1 million websites from Alexa in order to check how long sessions are maintained. Turns out that pretty much all browsers maintain sessions, uh, TLS sessions, that is for at least 30 minutes. And some browsers, most notable according to the paper, Firefox and Safari will even maintain them for 24 hours. They're also introducing what they're calling a session prolongation attack where a malicious web server could specifically extend the lifetime of a particular session ID or even correlate different session IDs back to the same user based on identifiers being transmitted during the handshake. This does also apply to TLS 1.3. Now TLS 1.3 was particularly designed to actually leak less information but it also likes to accelerate the establishment of a session, which then again leads to the reuse of session identifiers. Now, as far as countermeasures go, of course, a browser could decide to not use session resumption. This would come with a small performance hit, and actually the Tor browser does enable this feature, or I should say disable this feature. The RFCs could also be altered to suggest a shorter session lifetime. Particular TLS 1.3 at this point does allow for sessions to persist for seven days. But then we also have a couple of bugs to talk about. First one is the file upload plugin for jQuery. So this is not in jQuery itself, but in an add-on. And the vulnerability here allows an attacker to upload arbitrary files, which then of course could be exploited in order to, for example, upload shells or other code. The problem actually exists for at least eight years and has actually been known in the wild. There are tutorials out there on how to exploit it, but apparently the authors of this particular plugin never really got word of exploits existing or the vulnerability existing. So this has been fixed yet and you definitely should apply it quickly if you have this plugin installed. And we got an update from Drupal that addresses a number of different vulnerabilities. Two of them are rated critical in that they allow for remote code execution. No exploit out for these vulnerabilities as far as I'm aware. And at least the one I looked at uh, looks actually like it's not so easy to exploit for a random user. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.